Hello, everyone. This is a Tath the Backlog, the podcast where I, Marcus Nez, tries to make a dent in their backlog one game at a time. This episode is all about Resident Evil 7, the survival horror series' jump to first person and return to scares after going down a more action-centric route that started way back with Resident Evil 3. Maybe 2 as well? I don't know. I, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure at least with 3, it got more action-centric. Resident Evil 7, though, what I'm talking about, originally came out on January 24th, 2017 for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It did come to Switch a year later, but only in Japan and only in the form of a cloud streaming version. Speaking of clouds, it's also available on Luna and Stadia, and if you're feeling extra courageous, the PlayStation 4 version is fully playable in VR. Oh my god, why would you ever play it that way? You are a psychopath. I would die, literally, in real life. Oh, never, ever, ever is that ever going to happen. I like Resident Evil 7. I like it, but I don't love it. I am still pretty new to the Resident Evil series. Resident Evil 7 is the sixth Resident Evil game I've finished, and that may seem like a lot, but there are like 2,000 different Resident Evil games. I know there are only however many in the mainline series. There's still like a dozen, 15... 20 plus i don't know are the revelation ones mainline code veronica is that mainline i think so i don't know as you can tell i don't really know that much about resident evil or at least i am by no means an expert but from the games i've played out of the games i've played from them out of them resident evil 7 is a bottom tier resident evil game for me it is way above zero and just below the remake of three. So bottom tier isn't that bad. Pretty much every Resident Evil game I've played, I've liked, except zero, which I have yet to record the script for that. So that'll be fun recording that after this. But I think the Resident Evil games overall are just really, really good. So being a bottom tier game at this point in my Resident Evil career, not a bad thing. But that doesn't change the fact that Resident Evil 7 is a bottom tier from what I played again, Resident Evil game. Part of why I didn't love my time with Resident Evil 7 is because it doesn't feel like a Resident Evil game. Sure, it has doors requiring silly keys, inventory management, and safe rooms, but it's also in first person. That's that's different. Features not a single zombie to speak of. That's pretty different. And changes a few key aspects of the series for what I can only assume is an attempt to be more realistic. All these differences don't make Resident Evil 7 a bad game, but they do make it a bad Resident Evil game. And as someone who's grown to love the series, I couldn't help but be disappointed by how little it felt like Resident Evil. The first and most obvious difference is the transition to first person. I have nothing against this change, but it is a change that brought greater immersion in exchange for sacrificing personality. Ethan, whatever the fuck your character, has no personality and because of that, it was hard caring about his story and his motivations for going through the shit you go through in Resident Evil 7. Multiple times through my playthrough, I wished I could just walk out the front door and leave all the shit in Resident Evil 7 behind. I didn't care about Mia or whatever your girlfriend's name was and just wanted to buy Felicia all over Resident Evil 7 and his kooky family nonsense. But you can't do that because if you could, what would the game be? It would be Far Cry 3, 4, 3, right? Three was the one where you could just be like, haha, I'm waiting for dinner, and I'm just actually going to wait for dinner. Oh, he showed up. All right, game over. But he can't do that in Resident Evil 7. You must endure this family and their various ways of scaring the shit out of you and scare you they do. The family section of Resident Evil 7 is by far the best, even though it's probably the part that feels the least like a Resident Evil game, or more accurately, feels like a feature of other Resident Evil games stretched out into an entire game all by itself. Think Nemesis and the like, and that's all you're doing. Yes, you will run into a few other enemies along the way, but much of the family sections are structured like a game of cat and mouse, where there's no point fighting until you reach the moments when you're supposed to fight, which aren't always obvious, or maybe it's just that I was so conditioned to run that I always tried running before realizing I couldn't do so and had to fight. These sections with the family are tense and feature some of the scariest moments I've experienced in any Resident Evil game. The scares are frequent with the biggest scare coming near the end when you make your way back to the house and well I'll just include a clip of me pooping my pants so you can all laugh at me. You keep pushing me aside and I can't break through. <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> fuck. Oh. Oh my god. 
There's our first jump scare of the night. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Fuck that shit. But scary as the game may be, these sections also frustrated me. I am not a fan of horror games where you can't defend yourself to the point of killing your perpetrator and Resident Evil 7 is guilty of this on many occasions. That feeling of helplessness is not something I've associated with Resident Evil at any point during my slow play through the series and it feels like a different game. It feels like a new IP that wasn't given the chance to stand out on its own because creating something new is more risky than continuing with something people have loved for decades. That said, I had only finished one Resident Evil game at the time of 7's release and my memory is probably shit, but as much as 7 doesn't feel like a Resident Evil game, I'm pretty sure it's what revitalized the series and brought it back to life after 6 all but killed everyone's enthusiasm for Resident Evil. So while 7 may not feel like a Resident Evil game, it is responsible for making people fall back in love with the series and why we got the wonderful remakes of 2 and 3. Hell, I'm pretty sure seeing the new direction of 7 is what made me want to give the series a go, so it's funny that I'm now here here being all snobbish about how it's not Resident evil -y enough for me. Also, I don't know for sure that the success of 7 is why we got the remakes, but it sure feels like that's a big factor. But in addition to much of 7 not feeling like a Resident Evil game from a gameplay standpoint with its reliance on playing hide and seek during most of the first half, it also makes a few seemingly minor changes that annoyed the shit out of me. Changes that make it less user friendly and mildly annoying. The number one thing I hate about Resident Evil 7, and I know this is a small thing to care and quibble about, but the fact that the game doesn't tell you when you've used a key or a key item to its fullest extent is annoying. Every other Resident Evil game I've played, to my knowledge, lets you know when you've used up an item by flat out telling you you've used it as many times as you'll ever need to use it and offers to discard the item for you so you don't have to waste valuable inventory space on a key or a wheel or whatever the fuck you've got in your inventory that you'll never need to use again. Resident Evil 7 doesn't do this. Resident Evil 7 says, fuck you, this shit is real, boy. Why the fuck would some magical voice tell you you don't need something anymore and then offer to take it off your hands for you? That shit is whack, yo, and we ain't got none of that shit up in our new game. I do agree that that shit is whack, but the shit I find whack is the lack of information provided by the game. What the fucking stupid, oh my god, sometimes even I look at my own writing and jokes and I groan and am embarrassed to be me and by me and everything. Would telling me such information break the immersion? No. Would telling me such information make the game too easy? No! It has nothing to do with difficulty, but mere convenience. You're also not told if a room has been cleaned out via the map, but this is something I am much less annoyed by and something I think may be in fewer Resident Evil games, but I'm not entirely sure. Again, I'm a Resident Evil noob here. I know being annoyed by something so small is ridiculous, but I spent so much time worrying about whether I should keep this item or that item in my inventory that it ended up providing me with just as much stress as any of the family members. Then there are the enemies. Not the bosses, but the regular basic ass enemies. No longer do we have zombies, but the mold instead. These black messes of goop and whatever the poop who scoop up bullets better than any sponge I've seen in a while. They come in a handful of varieties from plain to chunky to creepy and crawly and every single one of them is boring. There are some flying bugs and normal non-giant spiders as well, but that's it. It's clear all serious thought went towards designing the bosses, the family and their story, and the regular enemies were just an afterthought. Yes, there are story reasons for why the mold are the way they are, but that doesn't change the fact that they're boring to look at and annoying to fight because of their spongy nature. Every other Resident Evil game has, at the very least, over twice as many regular enemies and much more variety than just, here's a fat one, and here's a crawly one. This lack of variety made being in the world of Seven significantly less interesting whenever I wasn't dealing with one of the family members, which is why the family plays such a prominent role. At first, I didn't really care for the family. They were scary from a gameplay standpoint, but why I was at their house, why they were the way they are, and any other questions meant nothing to me. Part of it is because your character, Ethan, is such a nothing character, but the bigger reason is because the depth of the story and the family doesn't show itself until 
much later in the game. It wasn't until I was about halfway through when I learned of what was actually going on that I started reflecting upon all that happened and started caring about the story. The story can be hard to follow at times and jumps around a bit, but once all the pieces start coming together, it becomes one of the best parts of Resident Evil 7. It may not feel like it has anything to do with the greatest story of Resident Evil, but as a standalone story, it is both incredibly scary and incredibly heartbreaking. Resident Evil 7 is a good game. I might even call it a great game, but it's not a great Resident Evil game. It's a Resident Evil game in the same way 10 Cloverfield Lane is a Cloverfield movie. You can throw in a few nuggets from the greater universe of Resident Evil and call it a Resident Evil game if you want, but that doesn't mean it actually is one. I still had a good time playing Resident Evil 7 and I'm still excited for 8, but I also can't deny being a little disappointed by how little it felt like a real Resident Evil game after falling in love with the series not that long ago. It has me asking a question I never expected to ask. Do I value a game like 7 more, or do I value 0 more? Do I love Resident Evil games because they're usually great games, or is it because of their Resident Evilness? That's the real question I'm left with after beating 7, and, well, I'm still trying to figure out my answer. Anyway, that will do it for this year's episode of Attack the Backlog. Once again, I am Mark Nez. Y'all can find me on Twitter and pretty much everywhere at PX Sausage. If you'd like to see me streaming games like Resident Evil 7, you can do so over at twitch.tv slash PX Sausage. If you'd like to see the videos I make, like the one for this year episode of Attack the Backlog, you can do that over at youtube.com slash pixelated sausage. Speaking of pixelated sausage, if you put a dot and then you follow that dot with a C, an O, and an M, C-O-M, what does that spell? Com. And what do you get when you put a com after a dot? You get a URL that has something before it. And that before it is pixelated sausage. So you got pixelatedsausage.com. And what is that? <laughs> That's my site. We got there. We got there, baby. Pixelatedsausage.com, where you can find this podcast and the Pixelated Sausage Podcast, both of which are available on podcast services across the globe. You can also check out my art on the site, and if you see something you like, you can purchase a print of the piece you fancy. And if you fancy the site in general and anything that we do, please go over to patreon.com slash pxs and support us that way. As always, thank you for watching or listening. I hope you enjoyed this here episode, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Ethan, help me. <laughs>